Good morning my brothers and sisters. I hope the day has been very wonderful for you and I know the Lord has been very faithful in actually taking care of you and also protecting you. His mercies are always sure and he is always faithful in the things that we do. Uh, today I'm privileged to actually listen to a talk that was given uh, some five months ago uh, in a general conference. And this was a talk that was given by Sister Amy A. Wright and uh, it was a talk about Abide the Day in Christ, which was very, very wonderful. And this talk today, it has actually, you know, edified me. It has, it has really built my strength and my faith uh, relative to what we are going through uh, today. And, uh, and, and I just came across, I think the Spirit just took me and I, I ended up finding this talk. And I listened to it and, and it was one of the most powerful talks and it gave me solace uh, in the things that I'm going through right now. And, and uh, without further ado, I felt like I should just share with you this talk and please let me know how this talk is actually blessing you by dropping a comment there and let me know how the talk has really blessed you. Otherwise, thank you very much and please welcome. It was a day filled with pointed and direct parables complex questions, and profound doctrine. After delivering a scathing rebuke of those who were like whited sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness, Jesus taught three more parables about spiritual preparedness and discipleship. One of these was the parable of the ten virgins. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And that they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, Ye know me not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. President Dallin H. Oaks posed the following thought-provoking questions in relation to the coming of the Bridegroom. What if the day of His coming were tomorrow? If we knew that we would meet the Lord tomorrow, through our premature death or through His unexpected coming, what would we do today? I have learned from personal experience that spiritual preparation for the coming of the Lord is not only essential, but the only way to find true peace and happiness. It was a crisp fall day when I first heard the words, You have cancer. My husband and I were stunned. As we drove home in silence processing the news, my heart turned to our three sons. In my mind, I asked Heavenly Father, Am I going to die? The Holy Ghost whispered, Everything is going to be okay. Then I asked, Am I going to live? Again the answer came, Everything is going to be okay. I was confused. Why did I receive the exact same answer whether I lived or died? Then suddenly, every fiber of my being filled with absolute peace as I was reminded, We did not need to hurry home and teach our children how to pray. They knew how to receive answers and comfort from prayer. We did not need to hurry home and teach them about the scriptures or words of living prophets. 
Those words were already a familiar source of strength and understanding. We did not need to hurry home and teach them about repentance, the resurrection, the restoration, the plan of salvation, eternal families, or the very doctrine of Jesus Christ. In that moment, every family home evening lesson, scripture study session, prayer of faith offered, blessing given, testimony shared, covenant made and kept, house of the Lord attended, and Sabbath day observed mattered. Oh, how it mattered. It was too late to put oil in our lamps. We needed every single drop, and we needed it right now. Because of Jesus Christ and His restored gospel, if I died, my family would be comforted, strengthened, and one day restored. If I lived, I would have access to the greatest power on this earth to help succor, sustain, and heal me. In the end, because of Jesus Christ, everything can be okay. We learn from a careful study of the Doctrine and Covenants what okay looks like. And at that day, when I shall come in my glory, shall the parable be fulfilled which I spake concerning the ten virgins. For they that are wise and have received the truth, and have taken the Holy Spirit for their guide, and have not been deceived, verily I say unto you, they shall not be hewn down and cast into the fire, but shall abide the day. Jesus Christ makes it possible for us to abide the day. Abiding the day does not mean adding to an ever-increasing to-do list. Think of a magnifying glass. Its sole purpose is not simply to make things appear bigger. It can also gather and focus light to make it more powerful. We need to simplify. Focus our efforts and be gatherers of the light of Jesus Christ. We need more holy and revelatory experiences. Located in northwestern Israel is a beautiful mountain range, often referred to as the Evergreen Mountain. Mount Carmel stays green year-round, largely in part to tiny amounts of dew. Nourishment happens daily. Like the dews of Carmel, as we seek to nourish our souls with things pertaining to righteousness, small and simple things, our testimonies and the testimonies of our children will live. Now you may be thinking, but Sister Wright, you do not know my family. We are really struggling and do not look anything like this. You are correct. I do not know your family, but a God with infinite love, mercy, power, knowledge, and glory does. The questions you may be asking are questions of the heart that ache in the depths of your soul. Similar questions are found in the Holy Scriptures. Master, carest thou not that my family perish? Where is now my hope? What shall I do that this cloud of darkness may be removed from overshadowing me? Where shall wisdom be found, and where is the place of understanding? How is it possible that I can lay hold upon every good thing? Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And then ever so sweetly come the answers. Believest thou in the power of Christ unto salvation? Hath the Lord commanded any that they should not partake of His goodness? Believe ye that He is able to do this? Believest thou the prophets? Do ye exercise faith in the redemption of Him who created you? Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? My dear friends, we cannot share our oil, but we can share His light. Oil in our lamps will not only help us abide the day, but can also be the means of illuminating the path that leads those we love to the Savior, who stands ready with open arms to receive them. 
Thus saith the Lord, Refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. And there is hope in thine end, saith the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. Jesus Christ is the hope in thine end. Nothing we have or have not done is beyond the reach of His infinite and eternal sacrifice. He is the reason why it is never the end of our story. Therefore, we must press forward with a steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope and a love of God and of all men. Wherefore, if we shall press forward, feasting upon the word of Christ, and endure to the end, Behold, thus saith the Father, we shall have eternal life. Eternal life is eternal joy, joy in this life right now, not despite the challenges of our day, but because of the Lord's help to learn from and ultimately overcome them, and immeasurable joy in the life to come. Tears will dry up, broken hearts will be mended, what is lost shall be found, Concern shall be resolved, families will be restored, and all that the Father hath will be ours. Look to Jesus Christ and live is my testimony in the sacred and holy name of the beloved Shepherd and Bishop of our souls, Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow. I listened to that talk for the first time. And I was so touched by what Sister Amy actually shared. Very, very touched. Because I've had an opportunity of visiting sick people, especially those who are suffering uh, from cancer. I visited in one of the hospitals in Nairobi. It's called the Texas Center in Nairobi where all the patients, you know, because the Texas Center in Nairobi is a hospital that uh, they are, I think they are specialists of cancer. And every patient that is, is, a co is, is, is admitted there, they are cancer patients. And some of them are of different levels. And I had an opportunity, once in a while I do visit there, and uh, they will allow us even to, you know, talk to, to the patients and, and ask them how they feel. And for those who will accept us to pray for them, they will pray, will pray for them. There are those who will uh, request for us to offer blessing, and I will actually administer blessing to them. It is so touching. And uh, that's why I said today, as I was listening to this talk and I was inspired to share this talk, it is because one of the patients that I visited just yesterday night, we, we talked very well. You know, we, we, we just discussed things very well. And uh, it is sad that I got a message, a text message from the from the nurse who was administering uh, to that patient, that uh, that patient actually crossed the veil in the middle of the night. And uh, she told the nurse to tell me that she really appreciated what I did. Like, to be exact, the nurse told me that uh, she said, tell Gabriel, thank you. That, that, that is what she said. And, 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 and she passed on. And I was very, very much moved, very, very much moved, because we smiled, we talked for quite some time, and, and uh, we, we had some wonderful stories. She took me through lessons of life, and there were some of the advices also she gave me. And, and, and uh, I'll keep those advices to my heart. And, and, and this is what we need exactly to know, that 
we need to stick to the Lord. We need to stick to Him. In whatever circumstances, we will know that we are always right with Him in whichever way. So no matter what happens, we know we are right with Him. And, and, and that is really key. That is really key to know that you are right with the Lord. That is really key. And, and I pray that uh, for those who are suffering from diseases, different kind of diseases, whichever way, I want you to know that uh, the Lord still loves you. God loves you so much. Jesus Christ died for you. You know, Jesus Christ died for you so that you may be whole. And uh, there is no need of you actually panicking. There is no need of you giving up in everything. All you need to do is just one. Give your life to Him. You know, give your life to Him. Accept Him as your personal Savior. And everything will be okay. Just like the way Sister Amy says, that the Spirit told her that everything will be just fine. Everything will just be fine. If we only we can offer our lives to Him. And I know if we do so, the Lord will always be with us and His peace will always prevail in our lives. Otherwise, thank you very much. God bless you and see you next time.